Hey guys, this is Gangby2 coming to you with another battle. This one's a 4v4. Not exactly a very common occurrence on EV Online. In fact, there are two different 4v4s on the same day. I just chose to only show you one of them. Because this one's by far the better of them. And uh, we have it's all Carthage versus all Rome. And so on the side of Carthage, we have Renskjöld, the Celtic Viking. Uh, I draw Swedrix. Um, me, Gangby2. And uh, lazy, uh, lazy O, Sith, Dark Luth, lazy, whatever. And on the other side we have uh, Kival, Brave Sir Robin, LMT, and Yavanna. And I could go through the army compositions, but I really don't want to because that would take a while, and taking a long time is not something I want to do. Um. It started with skirmishing, obviously, and we've had a lot of time to maneuver our troops around. Um, the two players in the middle here, the two middle Carthaginian players, take a lot of heavy infantry. Got a lot of the Dorkai, Hotkapa Iberim, the Dorki Malupim, and Neitos. And, uh, same story over here. We have, um,. You can see Romans getting getting some good peel attacks on. We're not exactly coming at this at a very good angle. And for some reason we're using guard and for some reason Arjo seems to have been using guard mode with these Nietos, and I don't understand why he's doing that. Anyways, he uh, forms a very long line. And he covers LMT and Yavana with the same line. And uh I was supposed to be catch up to him with my line, but I don't exactly get to do that. I don't really see the need to at the moment, because Yavanna's not being particularly aggressive with his reserve triari. So I decide just to, to march my troops into a flanking position. The engagement is beginning here in the middle, where the, but there's mainly just some skirmishing going on. Uh, as soon as the, um, the Nietos were hit by the Pila Volleys, not much else happened. Although you can see uh, some pretty severe whittling of the numbers by these huelites. Anyways, you can also see the Romans getting the better of the f missile fight over here. As the Celtic Viking keeps moving, f moves forward and then retreats his Dorkayat Klapait very, and they get pestered by Roman javelins. Um. And you sort of see a standoff along this part of the line, and the, and the Carthaginians are getting through their javelin volleys at the, at the Romans now. And you see not good angling or aiming on the part of the Carthaginian player, uh, the Arjos, at getting volleys onto these Principes. He spends all the volleys of this one prin these units on the one Principes. And while 27 of them, them are killed, I think you could have done better with the full AP volleys of 4 units. Anyways, first blood is drawn here. Besides the uh, many skirmishes, not first blood, but you see Principes going up against Malceliotai Hoplitai, which is not something you see very often. And on this side, you have a fight starting over here. As the Sardinian infantry get caught up by the Romans, they're gonna get routed quickly. Um, lazy uh, Renskjold is pouring many, many volleys of javelins into these uh, these Kaitradi and the Hastati, trying to weaken them. And meanwhile, the Iberian assaults keep taking a pounding from the Roman Pila. Which is helping even out the fact that the Iberian assaults are much better than most of these infantry that the Romans have to bring. Before these Iberian Catrati can get off their armor-piercing javelin volleys, the Romans wisely rush in to the fight, and so the Catrati are forced to commit to melee. By our fair play rules, you're not supposed to throw javelins while you're in melee, unless you're like at the back of the melee or something. Anyways, a gigantic brawl, really nasty, disorganized brawl develops. 
You see just a glob of Roman troops. Chopping down, you see the first casualties of this of the Numidian skirmishers, which got caught up in the fight. They get routed pretty quickly. Uh, they get routed by these Roman cavalry. And you see all these, uh, these light infantry, which deal a lot of damage with their javelins. Once they're caught in melee, they're not so well off. There hasn't really been much of a fight developing over here at this point. It's just the Massalians getting pressed by these Romans, but on the rest of the line, it's just been guard moding. Over here is real, where all the real action is going on. You can see a lot of units are getting poured into this fight, but it's main and uh, the Celtic Viking and Lazy are bearing roughly equal parts of the burden here, but it's a lot of Celtic Vikings heavy infantry getting chopped up. And you see the Romans just have many, many, many more men in this fight, and they're quickly flanking around the Carthaginians. You see these Triari holding the line while the Nietos get around. And you have these Roman cavalry swarming everywhere. Karepos getting in. Javelin volleys. You see uh, Lazy tries to get in a cavalry charge and kills some of them as they're caught off guard, but that's not enough to uh, turn the tide. He does manage to route this one unit of Dunaminaka, but there's so many Romans over here that there's going to be a chain route over here very, very soon. As soon as these uh, guys are all chewed, as soon as this unit gets all chewed up, the rest of these will fall in short succession. And you can see this battle, this side of the battle is really chaotic. This flank is about to get overrun. And these Carthaginian cavalry haven't been able to effectively maneuver around because the Roman cavalry have done a pretty good job of controlling the space here. So the Carthaginian cavalry can't get on the back of this blob of Romans. I don't think they'd even do very much if they could, just because there's so many Romans, including these very resilient Triari. Okay, you can see uh, there's one unit that's a Sardinian infantry unit. Um, yeah. Over here, the fight has developed more. Um, well, really, it's just guard motors. There's barely any engagement. Uh, you see a couple guys stabbing here, and I'm marching my elite Africans into place to take on these Triari. But the most important thing that's going on here is various missiles pouring into the back of these Triari and Principes from uh, Lazy and I's numerous missile infantry that we have massed over here. You see all Lazy's, a lot of his missiles are just going around the flank. And you can look at like how this battle position sort of developed, there's sort of a big hook here, and there's a lot of Romans inside this portion of the battle. And you see, it looks like we might be able to encircle the Romans on that side, but on this side, it looks you see we should come back just in time to watch the Carthaginians break over here against the massive oncoming Romans. No Kanai here, a deep Roman formation easily bowled through the Carthaginians here. And at this point I began to sort of panic. I thought that the Carthaginians might very well come down our line quickly. There are however a lot of troops here, especially Lazio's numerous cavalry, I think eight cavalry units this battle, able to slow these guys up and there's some resilient troops, a lot of resilient heavy troops here able to hold opponents off. For example, these Dunaminaka are able to repulse the Briantin and these Nietos and uh, various Dorkahat Kapi Baram are holding off. Although, I think Arjos makes a huge mistake here by putting these guys in guard mode because these guys have a wide spacing and so they're not su they're suited to getting around the enemy and flanking them. And you can see, uh, look at this big space of unengaged frontline troops. If these guys were attacking, they'd be engaging on the flanks of the Sestari Samnitiki, and of course killing a lot of them. Anyways, you see here, numbers have gone down a bit, but not by much. These Triari are quite resilient. See on all fronts, the Triari being a very important component of the attack. They're uh, gutting into the Nietos line right here, for example. 
Over here, more guard mode fighting. A couple guys got stabbed, that's it. Advantage of having a spear. Um, but what you do see going on is a lot of missile cavalry swarming. I'm bringing in my new Midian Skirmisher cavalry to harass these heavy cavalry. And as soon as they start to turn their backs, Lazios, Balearic, Slingers start to get off volleys on them. And I don't follow up my pursuit as aggressively as I probably should, but I was afraid that these guys might just get cut down in quick succession by any sort of more cavalry coming back or maybe a skirmish malfunction. But the Roman players, I think, here make a mistake. Uh, they fold their Triari line back, and you can see that they're sort of making a circle for themselves. Sort of making a fishhook-like formation, like at the American Battle of Gettysburg. But in this case, they don't have a hill to stand on in order to defend themselves, like, they, like the Union Army did at Gettysburg. And they really are of course, sort of the Union Army, because they have more infantry. Um... You see me able to line up my elite African infantry quite well. I think I do get a javelin volley on the flanks of these Triari here. It's an excellent area to attack. And another bad thing about this formation is Lazy can bring in his Balearic Slingers and hit the back of these units, which is devastating because Balearic Slingers have four missile attack. You do see, however, that even though the order of battle is broken down, the Carthaginian line has been crushed. A lot of the Romans are sort of globbing up. I think they might get harassed by missile troops or something, and some of them aren't being committed very rapidly. And so the Roman advance around this side has been delayed. But it's like the Carthaginian cavalry. However, what you do see is a lot of Yavanas and LMT's cavalry coming to action, and this uh, breaks off the Carthaginian units. It's like these Neotos get broken. These assault, assault infantry get broken again. Don't use them in guard mode. And Lazy attempts to bring in his Numidians to gain a charge, but since all the Carthaginian infantry are routing, these Numidians get cut up pretty quickly. And now I see that I'm in real trouble. So I see this, and I launch my attack. I launch in my elite Africans on these Triari, attacking this corner, and you see I, it appears I might have some sort of numbers advantage, but really what I have is advantage in troop quality. And you also see, see you can see all these skirmish, these uh, Balearix able to slowly pick off the back, pick off some of these Principes from the back. Over here, I notice how bad things are going in the center, which has been completely destroyed by the charge of Yavanna's cavalry. So I bring in some of my Numidian cavalry to harass. That will do some decent damage. And I bring in my Iberian Lankiari. And you see, I have a lot of cavalry now. I don't really have a good angle to attack the opponent's at. Especially because these guys are going to crack any second now. Now they're steady. Maybe they won't. What I do try to do is... Um, shoot the gap and run through this unit. But you see a bunch of routers get in my way. And the Principes are turned to face the incoming attack. And the whole thing is sort of bogged down. And I'm not able to effectively get my cavalry into this circle. You can see that if I could quickly get a cavalry unit back there, the Triari would get quickly destroyed because I have a large numerical advantage, morale advantage, etc. And I'm going to run over this corner fairly quickly. But these annoying Roman Triari units keep foiling me. I'm sorry, get my, my Lankiari do not get an effective attack on the back of the Romans. They instead engage against the Roman cavalry. It's probably a good decision. Um, probably quite advantageous that I got to do that. But I don't get in a single charge with them. I do get a charge with my Numidians on the back of this Roman Principes unit. 
which probably results in the getting killed for very easily. Um, I bring back my Numidian cavalry to run over some routing Romans, and uh, Lazy commits his skirmishers on the flanks of these reinforcing Astani, which I guess threatened to stem the tide of uh, the Romans being run over. But you can see that I've broken past the units that were there. And in come the Parasim Numidim into the backs of these units. You see a Roman general got killed in order to instantly rout them. So, while the Romans fairly decisively won this end of the battle, they got bogged down. And I was able, to, Lazy and I were able to easily win this part of the battle. And all of Yavanna's infantry are quickly killed. Over here you have uh, another situation where you have a big blob of Roman infantry getting bogged down in combat. But this time, unlike previously, we're suited to take advantage of it. You also see uh, another example of these Numidian skirmishers playing an important role in this battle. Um, the Roman cavalry were a lot more numerous than my Lankiari, but I'm able to bring in my, Numi my spear arm Numidian skirmishers to help them out in melee and I uh, got a good kill on the Romans general. And you see how badly so you see what's become of Yavanna's cavalry. Look at all these Roman infantry, they're not doing anything. The Romans uh, start to pull out, I guess. I guess they see that this is not going to go very well for them. They just leave these uh, allied units to do with all the fighting. But now instead of Romans swarming everywhere, now we have Carthaginians swarming everywhere on this side of the battle. And the Romans are all sort of disorganized. Uh, you have another blob of infantry getting tired very quickly. Um, they've cleaned up this side of all Lazy's various infantry units. But <coughs> that's all they've done. See, my general unfortunately gets killed there. But the Romans are. They still have, they have all these infantry scattered around here that are just going to get very easily run over. Again, like another one of these Samnite units is shaken. As soon as it's engaged by anything, it's basically in a rout. You have these Brihinton that are going to get killed. You have a couple units of Astati here that are going to get killed off pretty sim easily. They're wavering. As soon as they get engaged, yep, there they go. And uh, all of a sudden, we have two camps. And um, the Romans won the center and our right flank, but the Carthaginians won the left flank. And so both sides are reforming. But not all of the Romans get to reform. Because, and I think this is the, a decisive factor. The Romans are out here. Stuck. And uh, you see I get in a timely charge with my Lanciare. And you see all these Roman infantry out here, especially these very valuable Petites Extraordinari, out here exposed to horsemen. And here come Lazy's Sacred Band Cavalry that run over a spear unit. And I turn my Lankiari on these units, and they very quickly rout. So there, there's three more Roman units right down the drain. There's that Hastati Somnitiki unit that just goes down the drain. You see all of these Ro isolated Roman units getting killed off on this side. And uh, most of the isolated Carthaginian units, well, they got completely destroyed. A bit time back. You could look at the composition of most of the remaining units. You see there are mostly Robins units. You have some slingers from Yavanna and some uh, infantry on this side from Kival and a couple elites from LMT. So it's quite a mix of players left on this side. Whereas over here we have Argyos. We have a lot of units from Lazy. Mainly light infantry is all of Lazy's heavy infantry, or if he had any at all, got killed. But most of the infantry left is mine. If, uh, all the Libby Phoenician heavies and we have the elite Africans, they're all mine. They were the flanking troops, that's why they survived. 
We see uh, the Numidian skirmishers again proving their worth as they hold off Roman infantry for long enough for me to engage my heavy African troops. And my Balearic light infantry. These guys, highly recommended. They're very good. You can sort of see how things play out. You have a large swarm of Romans on this flank. So, um, that poses a potential threat to Carthaginians on this flank. These guys could get run over. In the middle, it's pretty even. You have elite Africans and Numidian skirmishers versus Principes and Dinaminaka. You have a Roman charge of cavalry but it's met by Libby Phoenician spear infantry, so it does not go very well. I think that's a waste of the Roman cavalry here. And you see, I kind of waste my cavalry attempting to get a hit on the back of these Peditis Extraordinari. It's not very effective. And I do have, have a lot of cavalry left. Uh, or at least two full units left, plus these Lankiari. And Lazy has his Sacred Band Cavalry, and this looks amazing. This cavalry, Sacred Band unit has 39 men left in it, which is pretty impressive for this point in the game. And you see now, this is the opposite of the situation we had previously over here, where a large number of Carthaginians were outnumbered by Romans. This time, we have Romans being outnumbered by a large number of Carthaginians. And you see a very thin line of Romans getting stabbed on both sides, on this side by Numidian cavalry and on this side by um, Libby Phoenician infantry. And they're just getting killed off. Even though my cap I guess my cavalry are all getting killed off too. But they I think kill off enough of the infantry if they kill them, that I think the Romans will break quickly. And say on the peripheries, on the flanks. There's some strength. You have these Principes, and on the side you have a large number of Triari. But in the center, um, the Romans are very weak. And on this side, the Romans are especially weak, as they're being... They, I mean, it's not even that the Carthaginians have a quality advantage, it's that we have a numbers advantage. And so we're able to just surround these guys, and through fear, get cause them to rout. And you see, because of all those routing guys, these Cretans, are scared, and so they're about to rout. And here come the Sacred Man Cavalry, and to kill off those guys. And as soon as those guys get killed, the Cretan archers rout as well. And at the same time, these Principes rout. These guys assaulting the flanks. You go to the Triari for your last line of defense, but Triari won't last forever. Especially when all their comrades on the flanks are getting killed off. Here comes the charge. Is this the straw that breaks the camel's back? Nope. Actually, here go all my Lankiari. I think I try to save them with these Numidians. But it's too late. I do have a man to kill off a large, decent Korean And there goes the last Roman general. Uh, lazy Sacred Bank Caffrey. Just keep killing him. We can fast forward at this point. Again, the overwhelming numbers of Carthaginians are going to get through these Romans at some point. Whatever that point is. They also have better stamina, too. Which is actually, I think, something that I might have overlooked in my analysis earlier. The, these Carthaginian troops have, I think, somewhat better stamina than the Romans. Hey, look at all these Romans starting to crack.
Uh, there we go. The Roman center is officially gone. And uh, for some reason, the Romans are retreating some of their units. I guess that was the last Roman general. He got stabbed by a Balearic infantry soldier. And they also had to admit defeat. And that's the game. So, an average victory. Uh, quite impressive one. Um, surprised how many troops were left. Like, look at, uh, like, I have more than half my army remaining. I think that's because I was there on the flank, and my troops uh, were guard boating for a lot of the game, and they uh, sort of overran their opponents at the same time. Uh, but you can see a lot of kills came from cavalry, and all my infantry units got a respectable number of kills. Even the Balearic Slingers, who weren't engaged at all, got 39 kills. Just a firing unit. Firing missiles. Anyways, good game. Uh, hope to bring you more 4v4s if we can in the future, and hope to see you soon.